What's going on Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here with development update 12.01 for Torchlight 3. This is still an early access game and we're going to dive into my thoughts about the game and my experience so far with the patch a little bit later in this video. If you look at your screen, as you can see, the patch notes are incredibly substantial. They were not joking when they were talking about over 18 pages worth of written patch notes. I mean, this is just in two pages alone within the internet. So what we're gonna do is focus in on a few things when it comes to the patch itself, and that's gonna be on the classes and skill changes as it relates to the different classes that you're playing, whether it's the Railmaster, the Dust Mage, the Forged, or the Sharpshooter. I've got a character of each, and honestly, right now I'm focusing 100% on Dust Mage, and I absolutely enjoy this, but I'm a caster at heart, I enjoy caster style you know, classes, and that ends up being obviously why I'm drawn to the Dusk Mage, but we'll give some more impressions of the patch itself uh, you know, here in just a little bit. If you guys want to jump just to that section, check the playhead of this video. I'll, sure, I'll be sure to include that, or in the description, you'll see kind of the, the outline of the video itself. But anyway, let's go ahead and have some fun with the patch itself. So for classes and skills, general updates. They remove the cost lines for all charge-based skills. This should reduce confusion that the cost line is indicating the amount of charges that you have. They added a UI to indicate skill charge recharge rate, ghost, vintage, shadow step, hammer spin. These should now use the same cooldown UI as non-charge skills. All skills with charges will now display their cooldown time in the skill tooltips. They disabled the use of skills in towns except for potions and portals and skill transfer bonuses no longer stay gray as you're adding points to the skill themselves. They fixed an issue where damage reduction for melee combatants did not count basic attacks and did not work for Dusk Mage or Sharpshooter characters. They increased damage reduction for melee combatants up to 50%, which was originally set at 30%. For the Railmaster, they fixed an issue where Railmaster train cars could steal player clicks, and they fixed an issue where Railmaster's turret train car would pop back up on the back of the track after moving forward when spawned. The Railmaster's train and tracks are now 75% of their former size. That's actually excellent. Fixed a hammer spin to not have the charge cooldown display in the ability tooltip and on the skill bar. They adjusted hammer spin speed bonuses from 50% to 25%. And designers note this was just too powerful and the points were put there to reduce the charge time of hammer spin charges and made it too much of a free travel skill. They revised the description for the track laying related skills so that they tell the player how they function as a toggle and they nerf pound endurance bonuses affect from 30 percent uh, sorry to 30 percent from 50 percent and duration to six seconds from 10 seconds for the dust mage we can see a wide range of changes here they greatly increased the nether m warrior spirit well attack speed for both its melee attack and its charge skills the Dusk Mage Dark Light Bars now stop draining for a few seconds after gaining their respective charge, rather than instantly beginning to drain as soon as they're gaining the state has ended. Inverted the Holy Bolt's Tier 1 and 3 milestones and reduced the damage of its now Tier 1 milestone to 150% skill damage and not double. They added 2 second cooldown to Shadow Step and Smoke Bomb to prevent unintended use of an extra charge and Shadow Step has had its teleport range increased by two meters. They fixed it so the tooltip for Shadow Step stays to get an only additional charge instead of four charges, and Energy Spikes now does 10 spikes instead of five, while Dark Charge and Anti-Shotgunning in place, uh, it does an extra wave of uh, Light Spikes if Light Charged, and these will also hit at two times hits, and they increase the Chaotic Pathing for the missiles. They increased consideration based damage bonus from 25 to 35 percent for all players in a circle and increased Radiant Blast's range by 2 meters. Radiant Blast tier 1 milestone damage is increased from uh, to 200 percent up from 100 percent and they adjusted Damnation's tooltips to match the damage increase. They fixed an issue where Damnation was always gaining its tier 3 milestone bonus and they Light Spear healing change to be about 20 percent to 3 percent per hit, but only triggers in the first hit with each spear. So for the designer's note, this is to resolve the fact that 3% heal was too weak with a single target, but totally way too powerful when you're fighting a huge group of enemies. So it now can be effective against 1 or 20 targets while still providing a satisfying amount of healing. They fix Luminous Run unlocks, uh, so level to its 15, I totally butchered the reading of that. Uh, Luminous Run Tier 1 Milestones heal amount increased to 25% up from 10% of maximum health. They adjusted Entropy. Milestone 1 dropped uh, the speed by only 50%. It used to be at 75 and increased the lifespan by 50%. 
They increased the, uh, they fixed an issue where the Holy Fury didn't ignite explosive barrels. They swapped the placement of Holy Fury and Radiant Blast in the Dust Mage skill tree. They fixed an issue where casting Holy Fury wouldn't trigger the charge bar's activ uh, activation proc. They fixed an issue with Radiant Blast calculating damage bonuses from items twice, notably resulting in the Brilliant Herald legendary increasing damage by 250,000 percent. Propagated its fix of Dark Spear, uh, Spears Tier 3 bonus uh, milestone bonus, but also suffered from the same bug. For Forge, they fixed an issue where players couldn't run through Forge players. Uh, they also added missing notif uh, notify states to the Forge Sword basic attack animations for Snake Locomotion. That's a work in progress. They fixed Forge uh, attack blurs for Sword and new locomotions, uh, and they fixed broken Forge basic attack trans uh, transitions, which failed to animate when wielding the great weapon with the thread ball Snake Locomotion. They revised Forge skill power protection to no longer do any sort of heal over time. Instead, it hits you and your allies for 15% healing on skill start. They added some rattle to the Forge uh, tread and wheel runs with all weapon types. And they fixed an issue where enemy players could get stuck inside each of the others using Vortex Bomb or another uh, root motion skills. The Vortex Bomb once again pulls in enemies and Fracking Strike now triggers uh, vent legendary effects and its tier one milestone is now unbroken. Regarding the Sharpshooter, the male uh, Sharpshooter male head added, work in progress, the reduction Sharpshooter base ammo regeneration by, they, they reduced the Sharpshooter base ammo regeneration by 25%. Ghost Vintage has had its teleportation range increased by two meters. The Heartseeker tier three milestone bonus missiles now start further spread out and seek out enemy targets slower. They are ramping up the speed over time. This makes them not clump up immediately upon firing and more accurately reflect the intent of the seeking missiles. They fixed an issue with targeting strikes, high, uh, hiding the character's bow. They adjusted Sharpshooter's ammo generation bonus from targeting strikes to be 30% instead of 50%. Shasta pets now get a buff whenever you or she takes damage, giving her up to 50% bonus damage. Casting Loyal Shasta replaced the current Shasta minion with a fresh summon. They changed tooltips for targeting strikes, tier 2 milestones that show that they only add 30% and not 50% increased ammo regeneration rate. They adjusted it to the Sharpshooter Goblin skill, does less one step and only summons one goblin per skill cast, not multiples, and this results into a maximum of 5. The designers note this skill was flat out broken, resulting in players getting too many goblins, not only per cast, but also overall. The Onslaught Tier 3 bonus does 75% explosion damage instead of 25%, and the dot finally works again after st uh, still only defeating one damage for some reason. Added some more damage reduction to the Curse Pippi skill from 15% to 25% per stack, and they fixed an issue where Sharpshooter pets wouldn't attack monsters anymore. Sharpshooter Tier 1 Goblin bonuses now extend minion lifespan, and uh, they are fixing more procs for Sharpshooters. Since their creation, these have been implemented applying and executing incorrectly, causing a ton of irreverent or er errant behavior, and that has been addressed. So patch notes aside, how is the game performing? First and foremost, I am still personally concerned about the player wipe. You can see here though, the town is regularly populated. I'm seeing lots more players in there and I'm not getting disconnected. The biggest issues obviously from the launch of the game were the connection issues. My personal issue is that this is still in my mind a paid beta, quote unquote, even though it's considered early access and with the character wipe confirmed, unless that decides to change, we'll have to wait and see. Now in the news post that I just posted the other day about this, about the update that's coming, uh, the devs are adequately, I mean, they're just really diving into the player feedback and saying that they're gonna make changes. Now, if I go ahead and hit start and jump into just this, we can see they've added the new contract system. This is a part of the notes. You actually can get up to three contracts, adventurers, craftsmen, and home steers contract here. Now, what this does is I've just been playing for a little bit, doing a little bit of questing, and overall making some good progress. You can see my fame here is filling up. I'm at 89 of 333, and as I unlock these tiers, then I'm gonna get these different and new rewards. And this seems to be quite substantial. Let me just actually click and drag because, oh, well, let me click and drag. <laughs> um, you can see that there are a lot of rewards, a lot of things to grind up in regarding the fame. This starts to make me feel a little bit like it's a battle pass, quote unquote, kind of system. But honestly, at the end of the day, I'm not having to spend real money on it and it exists and it looks like that there's multiple tiers. That says 10, so it says 40, I guess, and then you can repeat it. 
I don't know how this is ultimately going to work. Uh, so I'm going to keep playing around with it. Like we said, though, that's the adventurer. You can have craftsmen and you can have homesteaders, different contracts. And it looks like at least the first level is starting out at 333. I'll give you guys more updates as I continue to play. Overall, enjoying my Dust Mage. Currently level 13, having a good time with it. If I just pull up the skills, so to speak, I, it looks like I've got one skill point And I've been kind of enjoying putting them here into this bursty kind of area. But if I go in and start using my spikes, that's also very good as well. So these are the school, the skills that I'm using, dark and light. And playing as a Dusk Mage, for me, has been a really a lot of fun. I've played the other classes. The Rail Master was the only weird, confusing class that I've experienced so far. And I continue to see little bugs and things like that here. Nothing game-breaking like it was when the game launched. But ultimately something that is still like, okay, yeah, like get it fixed, guys. I hopefully they're going to get that uh, figured out. And, um, you know, honestly, just continue to develop the game, improve upon the skill selection, bring in more passives, bring in way more different things. Now, this isn't a guide, so I'm not necessarily going to go through everything. But, you know, I've already got one legendarium unlocked. My next one unlocks at 20 and the next one at 40. And so that's going to be interesting how this all plays out with my character build. Uh, so there's still so much that I have yet to do in this game. So this shouldn't be treated as a review. This shouldn't be treated as a guide. This is just me talking about my experience thus far. The, ster the server, the servers, yeah, perfect. The servers are stable. Um, and ultimately, they're, they've been really, uh, it's been fun. I really look forward to when I can log in and play this game. The fact that I played this on Shadow PC means that I can play this on my phone. So I can kick back downstairs and, uh, and you know, kill some monsters in my, my spare time. Uh, etc. But if you guys have any questions about the state of the game, I know that there is a, you know, the review bombing. I know people aren't happy with it, especially when you relate it to Torchlight 2. I'm not saying that this is going to be better than that, but I'm saying that as the experience is so far, I personally would recommend maybe holding off. Uh, or if you want to, like somebody was talking about it on stream, you can feel free to jump in, take a risk. You can get the early access discount price, not worry about playing it. And then when the game eventually releases for full price, that you'll end up having a copy already at discounted price. It's going to be up to you ultimately what you decide to do with your money. But if you have things, questions about the game itself, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll be continuing. I'm going to continue to play this game. Um, my goal is that if I can get you know at least all the characters up to, to cap and and look at you know putting some guides together on this game, that would make a lot. That would be a lot of fun for me because I really enjoy uh, making these kind of guides for you guys. But anyway, like I said, questions, comments below. Love you faces. Love you very much. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic week. And I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this video is sponsored by me. If you guys like uh, podcasts and long form content, I hope you check out Ginger Gaming Radio. Link will be in the description of this video below. So if you're still watching this video, thank you. And check out the new channel for more content and hopefully you enjoy. Thank you.